welcome to Vote Pro Podcast, the award-winning cannabis news podcast brought to you by VotePropot.com. Here are your hosts, Phil Adams, Jay Breton, and Andrew McCready's. Why does Snoop Dogg microwave his weed? We'll be getting into that. A study says that most medical marijuana is too strong. Um, okay. <laughs> and, um, and Jay's got a story about corrupt. Now, this is, I, I find hard to believe, but corruption in Chicago in their dispensary lottery system. Um, but first, um, Andrew's going to start us off with a, a subject we've touched on briefly before, but I think it's worth, uh, uh, talking about again because uh, well, Andrew, get, get us started on this. Okay, this is a study recently, a 2017 study just got published in um, the Journal of Consciousness and Cognitive Thought or whatever it is. Yeah, I read that um, every week. It's great. Really? I like I like the comics. It's a real thinker. It's a, it's a, it's a thinker. <laughs> anyway, uh, but they did a study on does cannabis make you more creative? And Okay. Basically, what they did, they did, they they did studies, and they, uh, uh, I think it was more just like a surveys that they didn't actually like. Here, smoke this. Here's a paintbrush. <laughs> go for it. You know? uh, <laughs> which would be a great test. I'd like to participate in that test. But sure. they took 900, yeah. 979 graduate students, and they asked the group a, a bunch of questions. And and what it boils down to, they they sort of divided thinking into two two parts. You have divergent thinking, which is. Uh, trying to come up like brainstorming for the best possible solution for something. And then there's okay. convergent, convergent thinking, which is like trying to come up with the correct answer on a multiple choice. And they're trying to see mm. if one, if cannabis will affect that, if, you know, mm. one of those two types of thinking. And basically what it boils down to was, you know, every, the, there really isn't any proof that says smoking cannabis will make you more creative. If anything, it says it seems creative people just like smoking marijuana. Hmm. Yeah, which kind of makes sense. But all of us are artists, and we've all, you know, artistically, musically, or, or other genres, uh, have created. And we know, I know, sometimes when I, you know, when I imbibe in a little bit of cannabis, I, it it can sort of uh, inspire some creative thought. I right. know. Now, George Carlin once in an interview, I'll never forget. I saw him. He said, later in, later in his life, he would get up every morning after his morning ritual, or whatever it is. He would sit down and write for like six hours, whatever it was. And he'd sit down and write hard. Then after after he wrote, he would have dinner or whatever. And then he'd sit back. He said, take like one or two puffs off a pipe. Just a couple of hits. And then he goes, mm -hmm. then I'd punch up whatever I wrote during the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. For me, See, I think it was opposite. Yeah. For me, it, yeah, I, if I partake a little bit, I might come up with an idea. This is as a songwriter. I'll come up with maybe an idea for a first line of a song or or the chorus, you know, idea. But then when I'm perfectly sober, let's say, that's when I'll sit down and, and pen it out. But then I well, can understand that, going back and editing it with a toke. Yeah. Well, that's but, interesting because Hemingway has a famous quote where he says, write drunk, edit sober. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, I've heard that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you, you get all your, you know creative juices flowing and then come up with whatever and 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 i don't write or edit drunk um but, <laughs> right. um, but if you were an illustrator i could see getting wasted it's probably not probably a good thing for you yeah, you know when you're doing yeah. you, know, you know draftman or any kind of draw you know someone who draws you know, infinite you know fine detail but i know as a musician or even as a chef sometimes when you're improvising it's a blast i know how many right. times especially when we were younger have we went Let's do a shot. Okay, tune it up. Yeah. One key. A, go. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, Boom. four. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, that's right. we go talk, for it. I remember yeah. in our when we interviewed our buddy A.D. Adams. He's the drummer. Well, he's a drummer. That doesn't really count. That well, doesn't count. He, he's almost a musician. Um, <laughs> he just hangs and, out with uh, musicians. He, he's a musician's friend. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But, uh, we're kidding. No, no, AD's We a, talked about... AD's awesome. We, we we talked about the idea, and there was some uh, research done on this as well, that um, certain amounts of, of cannabis makes your uh, makes things slow down for you, so you're actually thinking faster. And and right. I find that to be kind of the case. It, it's, it doesn't dull my thinking, it sharpens my thinking, and when I'm wasted, it's because my thinking is 
way too sharp and I'm off in a million directions right. all at once. Well, that's one of the things the study said is how one of the things that might be is that cannabis sort of lets you, you know, shed the distractions and your inhibitions and try things yeah. you never would have tried before and with, with less distraction, which, which kind of makes right. sense. Kind of. I know what, like it when does. you're jamming, it's just, it's fun just to improvise. It's just, you know, or, you know, when you're in a, when I, I take a couple of puffs and I walk in the kitchen, let's make something good. And I just see what I got and combine. I've come up with some really cool stuff. I've right. bombed, I've bombed I've, miserably in the kitchen too, but I've come up with some pretty cool stuff <laughs> too. Yeah. I saw Dude. an interview recently with Ringo from the Beatles and he, they asked him about drugs in the studio. And I thought his answer was really interesting because he said, uh, uh, paraphrasing, he said essentially that it was rare for them to be fucked up while they were making music, yeah. arranging, recording. Right, it just right. didn't do it. He it goes, didn't we work would, for them. Right, right. We might, you know, when the day was winding down, we'd smoke a joint and have a drink or, you know, whatever. And listen, but and listen to the days. He, he said there were times. The yeah. There, there were there were times when they would when they would all get really you know stoned and record a bunch of stuff, and then they'd come back the next day and listen to it, and they're like, this "We got to do all of this. <laughs> we got to do this all over. This this That's is terrible." Right. That's well, what I don't he think said. It's though. surprising yeah. that the Beatles didn't get wasted when they went into the studio, right. considering what they you know what they accomplished in the studio. I think it's exactly. It's pretty right. obvious. On, I don't guys. think you could do hey, that. Hey. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting, uh, interesting topic there, Andrew. I have to think about that one a little bit. But uh, now, when yeah. you're when you're cooking, and 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 you're stoned, do you, do you make more delicious meals? Yeah. No, but sometimes I'll come up with creative ideas. Like one day, I I would I wanted uh, had a craving for French toast, right. and uh, who doesn't? Well, man, I want some French toast, and I went and I didn't have any bread. I thought well, I could make bread, but God. So I looked in the freezer, and I had to like I had what I I'm sometimes when I make too many pancakes, I'll freeze them because you can just throw them in a toaster if you had to. Right. So I took pan stale pancakes out and made French toast with oh, pancakes, man. and it was freaking <laughs> awesome. And I'm so, going, that sounds so good, man. <laughs> so good. And I don't now, know if I would have do, done that if I'm sober. I don't think it was like. Do you, do you ever make... microwave your weed? <laughs> No, but I know someone that does. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Tell uh, us. Who oh, could, I know of be. someone. I wish I knew. I, I, this now Snoop Dogg. Now, which is one person I think if you had to place oh, those five people, a, you, would, you would like to get stoned with. And, yeah, and absolutely. Willie, uh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Are, are on everybody's <laughs> list. But uh, no, there, there was an article came out that said Snoop Dogg. He he microwaves his blunts for eleven seconds. Really? Before he smokes them. Now, first, I thought that, like, I've studied, you know, cannabis cooking, and I know that you can burn off the THC if you get too hot. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I also know that microwave yeah. ovens, are, you know, are have hot spots in them. You know, right. it's not just, it just yeah, isn't it's all, not all like, even. convection yeah. oven. It's not even. And it's, that's why it's good to spin things in a microwave. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, right. So, I'm thinking, God, you know, the, yeah, I would think that you don't want part of your joint to, like, you know, have your microwave something, like a hot dog, come one side's oh, blistered yeah. and the other side's still frozen, you know? Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you don't want to, like, melt all the THC in mm. one part of your joint. That's what I always thought. But he was saying that, I think it was a a 900-watt uh, microwave will only produce 240 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is... The, really? the temperature you which at which you decarboxylate decarboxylate so, yeah yeah so actually what Snoop said he goes oh it sort of traps everything inside there you know and but some people go okay we just kind of get that maybe sort of like have sort of just sort of sort of melts the sap for a second you know the term yeah maybe just me. gets the juices going a little bit right. you know yeah so Look, they didn't so they dissipate as quick or something if but, Snoop says so, but he's also I, but now they're also saying it might kind of decarboxylate the weed a little bit too, <laughs> a little bit more. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you willing to defer to Snoop's judgment on this, Jack? Well, that's what that, I think. What a bullet comes down to is me personally. It's like, man, if Snoop says it's cool. It's you know, who are we to question it? Who are we to question it? It gets well, the for know, stamp of approval. <laughs> that's he's right. He's been hanging out with Martha Stewart, so maybe it's a little cooking tip she gave him or something. It's I, a good thing. I don't know. It's a good thing. <laughs> Well, I'll have to you give that a it. shot. We'll give that a try. I know. God, I just saw to see Snoop's new Corona commercial. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like it. He's good, man. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> He's a really talented guy, man. I really like Snoop. You guys want to he talk? He walked across the, stream, the huh? screen drinking a beer and sat down in a beach chair. Man, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> he I looks respect cool the guy, doing but, it. But I, that, I, I could I do that. Cool doing, I know, but, you know. But he just I, does I, it I he just walked, across, took it off a beer, and sat down in a chair, and just like, "Yo, man," yeah. he's like, "Have you ever seen someone in a hurry?" That's because you're not in a room with people, Corona, not in a hurry. 
Yeah, uh, and which was good, you know. I would love some, to share some, a Corona and, and a joint with that guy. I think he would be a blast yeah. to hang out with, you know. That's, uh, I'm looking at it going, God, that guy's got such a great fucking life. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Corona, not too bad. A, here's a million dollars. Take, drink this and sit down. Why <laughs> 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 can't I get that gig? <laughs> right. You guys want well, to talk? They may have had to. They may have had to do two or three takes. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> it's not. That's a. So, that's no, a no, rough no, million no. bucks right there. <laughs> actually, actually, probably filling up as a night to film something like that is a lot more difficult than, than you then. think. Yeah. It, it, it's then you it, it, well. A little more. <laughs> a little bit more. Well, yeah. it's mostly anyway. as easy as it looks, but you know. Thank you for joining us for Vote Pro Podcast. If you enjoy the show, we'd love to hear from you. Send us your thoughts at votepropot.com slash contact or send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com and please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to be part of the show, call our message line at 240-257-2441. Tell your friends about us and be sure to like, follow and share us on social media. Just go to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter and do a search for Vote Pro Pot. Now, back to the boys. Two weeks ago, we did a report about um, uh, the how... Uh, uh, GOP congressman who wanted to vote for the Moore Act, and it was scheduled for a vote for a week last week, and then it was pulled from the floor schedule. Um, now, this week, it turns out that the Democrats, the leadership uh, of, of the House, has removed another bill, a research bill this time, from the House floor hmm. schedule. So both of these should have been voted on by now, and neither one of them is going to get any attention. And uh, I'm not sure what's up with that. You think they don't have the hmm. votes? That doesn't seem likely in the House. Or is it just... No, just are they mostly stuff. GOP? Well, there's only three GOP um, members that are going to vote for it. Um and the rest is against. So, yeah, it's so far, Democratic well, the, 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 they're the only ones who have announced they're going to vote for it. But that should give. Well, the the the, the Democrats, of course, control the House, so they have the votes to pass it if they want to. Um, so why they can't just you know put it up for a floor hmm. vote and say let's go? Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I'm, who knows? I'm, I'm I mean, not sure. It could be anything. It could be a scheduling issue. It could be ha has has the House have they voted on anything in like the last couple of years? Oh, I'm sure they voted on lots of stuff. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that we never hear up hear about because they're not high profile yeah. bills. But yeah. yeah, stuff gets through. Um, no, I didn't stuff gets were... through the Senate. Stuff gets through the House. Probably a lot slower and less, uh, fewer of them than the Senate. It's a trickle. Yeah, especially yeah. But I was trying to be funny. Be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, you well, know, why do you think? To, though? Why do you think it? Short plug. Short plug. Why do you? Th oh, Wendy's you strawberry lemonade. Is that some good stuff? Awesome. Is a little it, vodka. Oh mm. yeah. Yeah. Phil, why do you think? <laughs> why do you think they they ducked and well, pulled the I'm plug? Well, I'm wondering if there isn't um, a whole lot of other things that they want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, um, could be. And uh, I, I, I really, I'm, I'm looking at some of the quotes from, from. Like House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, mm -hmm. our guy here from, from Maryland. Maryland yeah. um, hey. he, didn't, he didn't give an explanation. He just said it was just an error. It's not scheduled for next week. Maybe it was never really scheduled. Right. Maybe, uh, um, you know, it was announced that it was, uh, and people were hoping that it was, but then it never did get on the schedule. So um, I'm not sure, but um, folks out there, if you want to um, see this get passed, Maybe send an email to your house member and say, "What the hell, boys yeah. and girls? Uh, let Let's get this show on the road let's here. Do it right. Well, let Let's talk about Chicago for a minute. Um, well, but before that, I okay. think uh, I think Snoop Dogg should run for president. I just want to. I just want to vote there for him. I just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> He's got much better things to do. <laughs> uh, Corona commercial. Uh, <laughs> he's got so much money. All right, Chicago. Uh, and this is about, again, it kind of kind of goes back to what we talk about with regulations and overregulation. And it is Chicago, which, you know, by all counts is the most corrupt city 
in the nation. Well, it's got a tradition of corruption, you know, a long reputation. I looked up a few things today, and it says that uh, they've had one party. They haven't had a Republican uh, mayor since 1931. And so it's a one-party city. So that can lead to problems. But this— As most major urban areas are in America. This story has nothing to do with Republicans or Democrats, though. In fact— there's a Republican on on this on this committee who's in question. Let me let me tell you what it's about. There's a guy who writes for the Chicago Sun Times named uh, Tom Shuba, and he's been writing this series of articles about this uh, social equity lottery system Chicago has in place right now to give out another uh, uh, batch of dispensary licenses. Now, how does that work exactly? Well, let, I, is, is it you get extra points if you know you're of color, or if you you've been convicted in the past of a minor conviction of that, or if you've uh, or if you're from an area in Chicago that's okay. been really hurt. So, by so the it's drug. weighted towards it's weighted. what they would call the and that's, traditionally underserved and that's great. communities. The problem that's is fine. who's getting these licenses has very little to do with that, supposedly according to many people in the know. So here's... Well, that seems to be a pretty common story from it coast is. to coast. And then it, the question is, you know, what happens when you fiddle around with the free market? You know, what really... How does that really, in the long run, does it really help anybody? Or is it just a bunch of hot air saying, we're going to help these people? And here's here's some examples. 75... Uh, this is the byline for one of his articles. 75 pot shop licenses to be awarded in lottery that includes only 21 applicants. And the people who lost are enraged in hiring lawyers. And here's how the article starts. State officials... How many licenses This is for out? This is for 75 licenses. And how many people applied for them? That's 21, 21. applicants passed. Now, you, because they can have more than one. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, so it's yeah, I didn't make that clear. It's seventy five each. Each license is for one, uh, one store, one dispensary. All right. Okay. So state officials announced last week that a new round of long delayed and highly sought after cannabis dispensary licenses will be awarded in a lottery later this month, in end of September. The twenty one qualifying applicants for the seventy five new licenses were informed after a global counting firm finished grading four thousand. 518 applicants, according to the wow. Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation. All those, so there's no shortage of applicants. Over 4,500 people, people filled right. out applicants. And of course, oh, okay. it costs a lot of money okay. to fill an application. We'll, we'll get to the... Yeah. All those... Well, not only to fill it, to, to file it, too. Yeah. It? Was all there, all those right. applicants received perfect scores, all those being the 21. Uh Qualifying as social equity candidates, meaning they were afforded a leg up in the application process as part of the state's effort to build diversity in an industry dominated by white men. Um, and, and it goes on to, to, to he goes on in a different article a, a few days later to highlight one of these groups. And that group is called the Green Renaissance Illinois. That's the name of the group. Right. A budding Green firm Illinois. that was recently named as a finalist in the state lottery. Um, the company submitted. What was that? A budding yeah, firm? Yeah, okay. like that. The, the company yeah. submitted 25 perfect applications. 25. So one company submitted 25 applications. All of them got a perfect score. And it was because okay. they went out and hired a particular consultant. A consultant. The interesting thing, it gets more interesting though. Under. Under one estimate, those licenses for that one company would be worth about $133 million, the licenses wow. alone. Now, here's wow. some of the people that are involved behind the scenes, and this reporter has gone out and, and dug up and figured out who's on the board. And it's a very famous Chicago restaurateur. There's a Chicago ex, uh, excuse me, an ex-Chicago police commander, a longtime a Republican political party operative, a former Chicago Transit Authority official, a cannabis industry insider related to the formal, a formal state lawmaker, um, and a former director of the state agency of oversee that oversees weed dispensaries. And there are more. So it's all these political insiders who yep. have raised all this money to pay millions 
to consultants to, to make sure that they have the perfect. And so these guys are getting this huge chunk of these, and they're all rich. You know, right. yeah. excludes all small business. So, operators. so when he goes, yes. when he goes, the, the reporter goes and and asks, "Hey, this is supposed to be a social equity program. You guys are all, for the most part, rich white guys." Uh, and so their their answer is that they're uh, the board that the chairman of the board is Hispanic. So they went out and oh, you know, well, that, that makes that it fixes okay. It. So that you know, fixes it. I mean, I think we want. They're very long. <laughs> they're very long articles. They're really in the weeds. I've read them, and I you can't really go over it here because it's too complex. But it'll make you sick to your stomach. The corruption is unbelievable. It's all people who are connected, who've gone out and raised money from their millionaire friends, and said, "Look, th we can right. sell these when we get them. These are going to be worth right. 150 million, 130 million dollars." Right, and they and they pay big money to elect their people to power who pass laws that only they can comply with. Which, of course, is... is they pass regulations that only the richest and most powerful and best connected and, will ever be able to comply with and everybody else is left and out. And in fairness, all cities do it, all parties do it. It's not a party line issue. It's not a Republican or a Democrat issue. No, it, it's, it's politicians. It's, the, it's big government yeah, issue. Exactly. It's what it is. It's crony it's capitalism money. and That's big government. That's the Benjamins, government. baby. It's, it's the all Benjamin. about the Benjamins. I'll finish right. up with a quote from a state representative. Uh, her name is LaShawn Ford. She's a Democrat from Chicago um, who has criticized this outcome along with many, many others. P honest, you know, hardworking. Both business people who are trying to get the licenses and, and a lot of the, the state officials who are just regular folks like us. And this is what she said. She said that the well-connected are having their way in this cesspool of state government. And, and that really it really sums it up. It's a yep. shame because, you know, once again, I think, you know, I think the, the intent is great. This the the you know social equity. Well, the I would say the stated intent is great, but the outcome the, is what what they're telling you that they were that they that's intend what I'm is saying. great. But the outcome their doesn't matter. Their intent is nothing to be uh, other than to get rich, right? And the so real intent is, on the is to get level. rich. All this on the state level. And Matt, what's going to happen when the federal government starts regulating? Right. <laughs> Good question. Well, you know, they right. interviewed several African American, uh, Latin, Latin, and and female business owners who filled out the same application, spent the thousands of dollars, but couldn't afford right. the million dollar consultant. They're like, "What the fuck?" I mean, yeah. I live in that neighborhood that's been screwed over for the last fifty years by the drug, you know, drug war. And I've been, and I've, you know, I'm, I'm a minority, I'm and a woman. Gonna, and if you make the money, you're going to keep reinvested in that community. That's it. Yeah. And so... And everyone, if these people are coming in from out of state, and they're going to take all everywhere. the money out of state. Right. From everywhere. Take it out of state. Or, you know, uh, they're not going to keep it in these communities that, that really need, need reinvestment. That need it. That's well, right. So anyway, that's a snapshot. Chicago, I don't want to pick on Chicago or Illinois. Why not? Well, you know, I'm just saying this is this is what you get when you get huge government controlling the free market in my personal opinion is that's you right. get you get that's what you get. That's what you invite. Right, um, and it's playing out in microcosm in the cannabis industry right before our eyes. I mean, and, and right, some sorry. politicians Ugh. propose in my opinion real quick, you know, I think what are good ideas to go into those neighborhoods and make banks and people invest in those neighborhoods, make loans available to small. I would love to see that. To small business owners who live in the inner city who, you know, right. don't have a two million bucks in the bank, you know? Right. Urban minority communities. So, anyway, I'm off the soapbox. So, well, Blood pressure, uh, I think it was a good one. And I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Take your bets. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, but, but you know, the, one of the problems is is that the, all these people that come in from from big business or, or political or law enforcement, they come into this industry, and granted, like, like the law enforcement guys, they're great to have in there because you need really great True. security and all, all, sure. all the regulations call for, I mean... It's like you're operating, yeah. you know, like you're, you know, it's the perfect lobby. Yeah. Plutonium. Uh, no, it's, I mean, it's pretty serious shit, which is fine. But when it comes to your average customer who isn't new to marijuana, right? <laughs> or these kind of stoners going to walk <laughs> right. in. That's right. You know, they're, they're from the cannabis culture. These cops, you know, either ex law, not just law, ex law enforcement, because some of them get it, some don't. 
But people from outside the cannabis industry just don't get the cannabis vibe. And they and the people, the customers get it. They man, they sniff it out like a like a like a uh, like a drug dog. Man, they can smell the people that are just there for the money and don't give a shit about weed. They can smell them a, a mile away, you know. And, and those are not day, these folks, Andrew. Right? A, I mean, I this particular some group. Are, some are, some aren't. I don't know. But, I mean, this group. But one day, it's a seller's market, and one day, mark my word, that's going to come back and bite them in the ass. Cause, right? Because all of a sudden, sales. I mean, they're, they're, I can go to competition. Well, I think you're right. I mean, you can't take greed out of business, but when you when when governments and regulators they they can allow the greed to float to the top. I mean, and this is a perfect example. I stack the deck. Right. It's just it's tough. I couldn't have said it better. Well, now let's let's talk a little bit more about the government, shall we? <laughs> In this case, the federal government, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, hey. is. Um, we, we keep talking about them releasing guidelines um, for, for CBD, um, for CBD yeah. and hemp production. Well, they are, suppo- they are supposed to release draft guidelines, and, and different organizations and groups and some politicians have wanted that delayed because they want to have more uh, influence on what those guidelines are going to be. And that's understandable. Sure. Um, but one of the things that they are going to release, and, and soon, I believe, is a, a, a guidelines that are actually designed to streamline approvals of CBD-based medications. Right. So, right. Um, and because we talked the problem about- isn't hemp, it's the CBD part right. of it. That's right. Because I mean, there's hemp farmers out there growing fiber hemp or, or hemp seed. But I have no problem. Right. It's the it's CBD the because, right, because because if you think about it, they're taking the plant, concentrating it, and you get these CBDs, and their people are using it as medicine with other medicines. Yeah. And that's where, like like Faye was saying, there's an issue here. If you could take a lot of CBD, refined CBD, with other you know, prescriptions, and it might have... And there, might some inter- have some interactions. Right. There's, there's signs that in some cases, especially like cardio- cardiac mm-hmm. patients... Uh, could have problems, right? So I, I, I've sort of seen it more. At first, I was like, "Who the FDA? Who do they think they are?" I'm going, "Well, they're just doing their jobs, and yeah, you, know, I, you I should be careful." Right. You know, so what's especially this? when it comes to ingesting it, right? And selling it as a medicine, right? There's a lot of liability there, man. a joint because you a lot have of anxiety is way different, I think. Well, what what what's happened with this is that, um, and, and and remember, two years ago, they approved Epidiolex. It was the first CBD-based epilepsy medication approved by the FDA. Um, and um, that's been two years ago, and now it looks like they're, after all this time, are, are beginning to green light more CBD. Because like you say, Andrew, the problem is the hemp farmers, they grow all this hemp. CBD is where the money is. They can't do anything with it, you know? Um the, the government allows them to grow it, but it doesn't allow it to convert it into anything. Well, this going forward, um, if, say, a drug company wants to produce some generic version of Epidiolex or, or, or some cannabidiol uh, solution, um, they could follow certain specific guidelines in this FDA uh, guidance that would would skip a lot of the 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 drudgery and steps that have already kind of been, I mean, Epidiolex kind of already paved the way for a lot of that stuff. So is there a schedule um, they mentioned when this might be, when this the final, um, I, I think any schedules that they, that they release are, are, are usually made moot the next day. Yeah. So it's because somebody wants to delay in it, but, but, uh, there is a there is a public comment period on the FAA's gra- draft guidance that was supposed to last until let's see November twenty third. Um, so um, also the FDA said they've they've closed they recently closed a comment period on a separate draft uh, guidance. They're, you know every little thing they do there's guidance that they put out on it. You know draft guidance for developing cannabis derived medications on on in general uh and um so well of course the, the big the, complaint in the industry 
Phil, has been why is it taking so long for them to come out with regulations that that let people get their business going? I mean, they uh, I, it's been forever. Yeah, I, there's I no can research. Say there's that. no research, you know. And again, the FDA is doing business with pharma. They, they're used to, uh, yeah, pharmacy. Con- yeah, you know, authorizing pharmaceutical drugs and and to take a plant like like cannabis and process CBD out of it, it's it it sounds simple, but it ha- right. that CBD has to be exactly the same every time, and that well, just well, doesn't well, happen. Right. Well, part of part of what they're trying to do, and we talked about this two weeks ago, is to um, pass this bill. And this is one of this was the research bill I talked about earlier that was taken off the House floor for a scheduled vote. If that vote passes, that means that researchers will be able to use mm. any cannabis that they buy from a state legal dispensary. Mm, right. Instead of what what the situation now is that it's all coming from the same, I don't know, Kentucky or Mississippi, I forget which. Yeah, Mississippi. Yeah, but, but, but with all the CBD. It's all one strain, and, and, and the FDA says um, that, uh, um, I, I forget which one of them, it's either the FDA or the uh, DEA Drug Enforcement Agency uh DEA has the uh, is the schedule 1 if i'm not mm-hmm. mistaken they have the uh, it's under the auspices of the DEA the Controlled Substances Act they won't release it from schedule 1 until they have uh enough research to back it and the FDA <laughs> can't do the research because it's on schedule 1 so uh, it's 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 the same catch 22 we've been faced yeah. with since vote pro pot stir- first but started it, but didn't the farm bill change that cuz we're not talking about marijuana here we're talking about hemp CBD which which in 2019 american farmers grew 119,000 tons as i understand oh. it the problem is they said you know it, it the farm bill said, "Yeah, you can grow it now," but then it also said, "And and the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, will come up with a set of guidelines and regulations mm-hmm. for how you use it." And that's what they've dragged right. their feet on. It's, right, and there, right. and I think there's probably some deliberate foot dragging. That's what I was going to ask by, yeah. by some by some by some institutionalized, you know, anti you know cannabis anti cannabis advocates in in these institutions who who are who were put there probably years ago because they are anti-cannabis and and since then have learned nothing and forgotten nothing exactly well i'll tell you what well if they want to do research on the hemp there's you know tens of thousands of tons of it out there that hemp farmers (laughs) would probably donate to to research if it would help them sell it they would get them yeah well speaking i'm sorry jay no that's right i was going to say moving on to my next article it's kind of segues from what phil just said Uh, as phil was saying about anti-cannabis people here's an example of a study that just came out and this is from mary jane by zach harris and it is about um researchers at wake forest school of medicine published a new study which claims that 90 percent of medical cannabis is simply too powerful to properly treat pain so when I read that, I said, "What? It treats it too well? How am I? How am I yeah, supposed to right. read this?" It's, That's according right. to a, a concurrent reports from the SciTech Daily and New Atlas. It's a study titled "Mapping Cannabis Potency in Medical and Recreational Programs in the United States." So what they did is they took batches from eight thousand five hundred different strains different flower from 653 legal cannabis dispensaries that are on website and all they did is read the data to see what the percentages were and uh what they came up with was wow 90 percent has more 90 percent of that has more than 10 percent thc and so this the leader of this study dr alfonso edgar romero sandoval is again, I think, an anti-cannabis guy because his take on this is simply that it's dangerous to to for doctors to prescribe cannabis with more than ten percent THC because we don't know what it does to them uh, for, in terms of psychosis and becoming dependent. So he's what he's done is he's kind of put his own spin on this study because what the study really says is, wow, weed's a lot we weed, lot stronger now than it was. 20 years ago. Well, we know that. We know that. Well, now, 
it, it sounds to me like he's kind of put up this arbitrary benchmark of 10 percent. yeah absolutely um that that and you know you know when i made that hot sauce mm -hmm. it, it's habanero peppers it's really hot if if you use a teaspoon of it in your chili it's going to be too hot so here's the thought don't use that much <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if the marijuana is too strong, use less. What, what he's saying, it goes, it goes longer. It goes farther that way. He, he, he's essentially saying that, according to other studies that have been done, uh, levels of up to five percent THC are sufficient to reduce chronic pain with minimal side effects. Right. So right. Sure. you don't need a lot. You That's don't why need microdosing a lot. is good. Yeah. In their conclusion, Wake Forest School of Medicine authors called the stricter regulation over medical marijuana pot uh, potency potentially from the Food and Drug Administration. But until cannabis is finally legalized at the federal level, no such designation is possible. Well, duh. So no kidding. Anyway, that I, you know, I, I and I think there is an issue here because we don't have the regulation. We don't have it federally legal. So how do doctors prescribe it? You know, how do they tell you? They don't know how to dose it. Yeah, that's they don't know how to dose it. Problems. Right. So, and th that's why I think a lot of people, maybe so many people, are trying cannabis to to treat chronic pain, mm -hmm. especially older people, or maybe returning to it, and they'll they think, oh, I'll just smoke a joint like I used to in high school. Yeah. And go, guys, you Holy can't smoke moly. a joint of sour diesel, man. <laughs> right. Jeez, no way. You know? Well, even like you know, yeah. Snoop Dogg, even after yeah. microwaving, he's probably going to tell you to chill out. You know, he yeah. still but, splits it with Martha Stewart, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, but so I can understand how um, how also people, some people enjoy the the pleasure just smoking it, and they and they you know, and some of this pot's just exactly. strong. It's like one or it's like two hits, and they're and you're and you're it's done. too much. And that's that's fine. Yeah. Now it, it seems to me like this rate this regulation is once again another solution in search of a problem um you huh. know do, do do doctors know how to dose chamomile tea right do doctors know how to dose ginseng do doctors know how to dose coffee uh caffeine in your coffee no well no you know but i bet there just is no use caffeine it. no 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 actually doctors can that is like the the uh the 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 potency of caffeine or even some of the holistic True. stuff uh you know, ginseng. Even though they could probably, there's probably somewhere some research yeah, somewhere yeah. that tells them this is about what be you know how to how to. But treat that's it. what I, I don't need a doctor to do, to to uh, prescribe. But some coffee. people, yeah. But some people who are like interested are new to it or coming in seniors who said I've got this chronic pain. I want to get off right. the opioids. Hopefully, your bud tender is saying, you know what? Here's some gummies. You know. Take start with five milligrams. Not, don't take well, any more. Or if you're going to smoke, just do the little teeny bit. Let it sit for an hour before you try. You know. So hopefully they're getting some guidance. Well, here's what I what I what I believe. I think that a good butt tender would tell mm -hmm. you, and I would love to hear what Faye would say about this. And that is, if you're treating pain like this, you need a balance of THC and CBD. Mm. Absolutely. To really effectively treat the pain. So when you're going out smoking these these strains that are super high in THC and have absolutely like. A lot of these strains almost, have almost practically no, no CBD, CBD in it right. whatsoever. That's not what you want for for treating pain. Right. So right. they're going to suggest that's why Willie Reserve has a like a two mm -hmm. to one CBD to THC. Yeah. Uh, right. Cat right. flower. I personally love that. that. that that's what I use. Perfect. And, and the perfect for this. Mm -hmm. And then and you the gummies have that I and the gummies. Yeah, yeah. The gummies I have are two to one, um, and um they're sold out i know them, i can never get dispensary they must be because they get because because Does people it like for you them. and it, it works, works for beautifully you? me too it works beautifully because if i take a gummy and i and what i do is I'll, I'll have a half a gummy before i go to bed and i sleep like a baby if it's just thc with no cbd i'll have crazy dreams too, and i'll wake dude. up and, and it's not as restful sleep no i agree um but the cbd uh uh just seems to mellow the whole thing out and make you know i totally agree make and make the pain relief uh, as bad as good as it can be well folks um i think we've buried these subjects once again so <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're awfully glad you joined us today um like my hat I do like your hat. It's uh, it's a very nice Vote Pro Podcast hat. You can get yours. Just go on votepropot.com. Get a hat. Get a mug. Support the cause. There, you know, you can 
you but make sure you put the coffee in the mug and the hat on your head and not the other way around and oh, um damn. you should be just fine it took jay three tries but but I'll he finally got it right <laughs> <laughs> so um and also if you get a mind to we really would appreciate it go on apple podcast give us a five star rating leave us a comment tell a friend all about Vote Pro Podcast and how much you enjoy it. What else, Jay? Send us uh, an email at podcast at votepropot.com. Andrew, what do you got? Well, two things. We're now videotaping, so please check out our videos on YouTube. Follow us on, on our YouTube channel. Yep. And definitely ring that little bell there. Click the bell. Yep. Uh, the other thing is it's coming down to the wire, guys. We're going to have this. There's across the United States and many states there's there are ballot initiatives and other legislation that's being voted on in November yeah. that concerns cannabis in some way or the other. Yeah. So please get out there and support and then vote pro pot. And if you want to find out more about all that, go to our, any one of our social networking pages. So go to LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and do a search for vote pro pot. Mm-hmm.